up, everybody? Welcome to another week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and today we have a very special guest. He is one of the co-hosts of the Scissor Bros Podcast. You've seen him on Roast Battle. I mean, you've you've been everywhere. Instagram? Yeah. I have a new special coming out on March 21st called Daddy. <gasps> Daddy? That's mm-hmm. the day after my special comes out, oh. Gay Bash. Hey! Premiering on Out TV. What are you excited about this special? I am, yeah. It's coming out uh, on my YouTube. I'm doing it that way, and uh, yeah, we're really excited for people to see it. I am on a uh, a network, and then I'm like in that like it'll be available on YouTube like after that's up. Yeah, I know. So I'll I'm be great. Excited for you. I, I like you were definitely like I've known you for years. You just did stand up on the spot. Oh my god, yes, and you're the host it. of stand up on the spot. Yeah, which is so much fun. Um, available on YouTube as well. Yes, and that's just a great premise, and it's such a great uh, sharpening tool for comics because you literally just get up on stage and the audience just throws out random things, and you just yeah. kind of have to go off of that. You're and sure. I actually got two really good bits. From that, yes. that I will be working on. I love hearing that. That's the best part. Thank you for taking me to school, Jeremiah. Yes, of course. It's good to have you. <laughs> it's Jeremiah Watkins. I'm so excited. Yeah, all right. we're doing it. Here's the thing. We have finally, first of all, this is like, I am in a polo shirt. You are in a hoodie and long sleeve because winter, we don't know what it is. We don't, we don't know, know what, what it season. is. It's no. been raining for 40 days and 40 nights. Um, it's cold. And um, the weather has finally subsided. I don't remember it hailing ever in L.A. No, it's been snowing lately. Snowing. There was a double rainbow like yeah. last week. And everyone's like, have you seen it? I'm like, yes, I'm outside. Like, you know. Yeah, I live I in L.A. Eyes. I've seen a double rainbow before. Yeah. yeah, but it was just nonstop. And everyone's like, what's happening? It's like 70 degrees in New York City. I have to apologize, first off, how I'm dressed. I was going to dress up for you. because Why? I know that you Because I know you, you know you cover fashion and you're always looking very clean and presentable. And I'm coming. In like a Home Alone character right now. <laughs> you are Listen. the lost wet bandit. That's <laughs> I am. I am the third wet bandit. It happened. Uh, a pipe burst on my street today. Yeah. Water off on the entire block. Whoa. So I showered last night, Good. but I threw on a beanie today and, you know, spritzed little, up a little, little bit. French cologne. Mm-hmm. Little Did one of those. Shower, yeah. But yeah, I was planning on, you know, having the hair perfectly quaffed for you today. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> Wait. But so no, it's just your, it's was just just your like curmudgeon water friend. coming out all yeah. over the street? Uh, yeah, yeah. I went all over the street and there was literally, I drove by the the, uh, the hydrant that bursts and it's like a warning sign all over it God. and everything. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to shower and then throw on the beanie. And- it is. It's crazy. Like power's been out all over the city. Yeah. Like anytime it, there's weather change like this in LA, like the city's like, we can't handle anything. The functioning of people is at an all time low. I like it started raining. I did a uh, juicy scoop with Heather McDonald yesterday and had to drive out to Woodland Hills and it was raining, but it wasn't pouring down, but it was enough to where it was that weird highway mist. Mm-hmm. And everyone was just like, to each their own. Like, there was no <laughs> rules. Complete, like, chaos Armageddon. No, no one knows how to drive. It is funny, though, because I did take Laurel Canyon up over the hill, and there was just this big-ass boulder in the street. Oh, yeah, just sitting just there? one cone in front of it. And I was like, well... <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger cone over here. <laughs> we put a marker on it, and everyone's just like, "Whatever." Like, yeah. no one gave a shit. I'm like, "There is a boulder." Like, I'm looking up the side of the hill, hoping there's not more rocks that are falling all I mean, around. Because yeah. that would be totally my luck. Like, he was on the rise, and then a rogue boulder rolled you didn't off. Hear the about hill. Justin? He got smashed by a boulder. <laughs> if it's not a his boulder. career was really taking off. We are really <laughs> sad about that. He got crushed by a rock, but you know, he lived fast and he died fast. <laughs> Now that's a gay bash. <laughs> Just hit by a boulder. If it's not a boulder, it's a palm frond or, you know, Madonna yeah. sitting at the edge of my bed at night. <laughs> was that uh, a pink boulder that fell on him? It, yeah. It, it, was a, <laughs> it was one of those weird, like, amethyst boulders. Oh, okay. A crystal. I mean, and so do you think the pipe exploded from... Just the, the I think all the weather changed. Freezing and the, yeah. Yeah, Ooh. because it's been getting like in the 40s randomly at night. And, you know, people in other states are like, boo-hoo. Oh, people in other states need to relax, okay? Whenever we, whenever we, t- I was in a, a full-on 
like plush jacket. Like what? What are they? Called? I've been wearing parkas. Parka, like the comics on stage because there's like we're in an old haunted tomb and performing and everyone's like from out of state and they're like we're from michigan do you think this is cold yes we do we do yeah. it's cold and like like i'm at home like my heat's on but i have no circulation and oh my yeah hands and feet and i'm like is this it well you grew up in texas i grew up yeah. in, in kansas and like when i lived there i was able to go outside my blood was thick mm -hmm. Just like the, the uh, all that the other people around me, thick blood, that thickness, that thick blood <laughs> from the diabetes, and I had insulation. But when I moved out here, it completely went away after about a year because there's no insulation off. at all. Yeah, these old buildings, they're like it was warm and and tropical, like yeah. back in the '40s, and you know we could we could get away with everything, and now we can't. And it's it, it's like it's it's cold, and it's unpleasant. But we have a break from it now. But I love that we're just kicking this off with just let's complain about the weather. Yeah, yeah, just weather. But that's what, we do. that's what we do. Um, what else is going on? Did you? Are you watching any of the awards season? Uh, fun fair. I watch a little bit of that stuff. Uh huh. Um, but sometimes I feel like sometimes I'm. Uh, it takes me a little while to get on board with what everybody else is doing. I just have been watching Breaking Bad lately, and I know I'm super wow. late to the game. You have really? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm a little bit late. My pipe burst. No, I've been watching Breaking Bad lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the. Have look. you heard of this show called Game of Thrones? Oh yes. I mean, my God. I mean, I, I loved Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um. But uh. No. Right now, I'm all about Last of Us, and I'm on episode three right now. Of Last best. of Us. It's the gay one. Yeah. Get ready, because people are pissed. <laughs> Wait a minute. Huh? So-and-so? There's, there's gay people in the apocalypse? Yes. There's gay zombies out oh there? Oh, God. Um, well, uh, so if you haven't been watching the award season, I'm going to say I'm a little... I'm a little bored because it's mm -hmm. just very predictable all across the board. Every Everything, everywhere, all at once is winning everything, which I'm everywhere, all at once. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm excited, but there's no, like, shockers... You know, we'll see the Oscars. There's no curveballs that, that right. kind of make it exciting, yeah. Right. There's no like, oh, didn't see that one coming. Um, I'm trying to think. The SAG Awards uh, were recently over the weekend. Everyone was talking about Aubrey Plaza's underboob. Oh, it, that dress was kind of funky. I did see that. It was a funky dress, but Aubrey's a funky kind of gal. Yeah, she's you know? funky. And everyone was saying like, oh, she was mad. And someone, she had a wardrobe malfunction. I'm like, no, I just think she was just kind of like, pissed off because she got like shoved in the back and she's like hi i was in the show as well um the one thing that really kind of pissed me off was uh michelle yo's dress there i said it uh she was can we wearing... get some eyes on michelle yo's dress i mean if you could just pull up michelle we... yo's sag awards dress that, that wasn't fit. the only thing that was sagging hello no that's i mean everyone was saying that about yeah. aubrey but i was like you know what leave her alone um, leave her alone she was wearing this dress, and she's the first Asian American female oh. to win uh, the best actress. So she was wearing this dress. Um, I thought it was made of post its. That's okay. I thought it was crinkle fries. Okay. I thought like it, it looks like like a hay barrel. Like she she just glued the front of her dress and then just like like belly flopped onto a barrel of hay. It looks like she was like hiding her tax documents and she shredded them all. <laughs> she put like, them on a dress. No one will find me. Um but, you know, it looks good from here, but when she won, she was talking into the microphone and then all you heard was <laughs> it was just ASMR that no one asked for. Mhm. Mm um, and so that's all I could think about. And I posted about it and everyone's like, thank you for saying something. I'm like, yes. Okay. Good. This dre dress is rough. It's, it's, it's a rough well, one. Literally the texture is rough. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, I mean, so she won, um, everything everywhere all at once won everything. So it was just kind of like predictable and like, okay, great. I'm kind of ready for the Oscars to just kind of be done. Cause the award season to me has just been a little underwhelming unless, Whoever's hosting the Oscars, I don't even know who it is this year. Um, if Will Smith just breaks in after being banned and just slaps the shit out of someone, right. maybe we'll get to talking. Or he volunteers as tribute and he lets a bunch of people slap him to try to, you know. Could you? I could totally see that. Where they're like, live from via satellite. And he's like, hi, I couldn't the, make it this year. And like all these people just. Yeah, just start slapping him. him. Yeah, for the cold open. Um, 
My uh, wife always tells me that I'm very opinionated with what I like for fashion because she'll put on something and I'll be like, no. Good. <laughs> I, 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 I'm honest though. Yeah. Like if, if my wife was wearing that dress, I'd be like, what are you thinking? But see, your wife is a sweetheart. She is sweet. And she is not the wife that like if she would ask you like, what do you think about my dress? And you're like, it's good. What do you mean by it's good? No, like, she would never do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're like, okay, yeah. And I'm the same way with my boyfriend. It's like, what do you think? And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, I'd rather just somebody be direct with me. Yeah. Be like, you know, you look like a homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> like, thank Unhoused, you, Justin. Here, am I? Unhoused. Unhoused. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to think. The SAG Awards, yeah, that was fine. Um you like? Oh. Do you like Last of Us more than Walking Dead? Did you watch Walking yes, Dead? Yes. No. Walking Dead was just too much. I too much? Just, yeah. Last of Us, I'm kind of like, all right, let's get to it. Because my opinion on Last of Us is kind of in the sense of Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, fine, 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 but give me dragons. Right. Last of Us, I'm kind of like, give me the clickers. Where are the clickers? <laughs> like, give me mushroom people. Like, we got, like, one... Mm -hmm. This episode, past episode, no spoiler alert, but you're yeah. just like, really? Yeah. Come on. Give me, come on. Get That's kind of, uh, there's a show that uh, M. Night Shyamalan did on... Um, the Servant? It pissed me off. Oh, I'm watching it right now. You Wait, you, me, and Eric Griffin, I think, are the only people who watch this show. I've only seen... The, I saw two seasons, and okay. then I'm like, I'm done. Why? He's not doing this to me again. Oh, yeah. He kept lingering and not giving things oh, yeah. where it kept dragging. I'm like, this show is driving me insane. And I told my wife, I go, if nothing happens on the second season finale, I'm done with the show. It's called edging. That's what they're doing. And your boy doesn't like it. I do. <laughs> I've, I have stayed with it. And is it worth it, though? Here's the thing. No, it's, see, you said here's the thing. It's not worth it if you're saying here's the thing. It's one of those <laughs> you're shows. Even trying to articulate <laughs> why you're liking this bad show, dude. Because I need to know now. Because like every time I see that's Eric, what M Night Shyamalan I does, know. though. He just keeps, dude. I Edges swear me. it'll be five seasons of the show, however many, and you'll be like, there has to this be something. This is the last one, though. This is the last season. Tell me how it ends. The last episode, and this is The Servant on Apple Plus, if you want to watch it. I think it's okay. The story is good. You're kind of like, but again, you're like, okay, what the fuck is Leanne? Right. What is she? Right. Is she a witch? Is she a demon? Is she the Antichrist? What is she? She's got this weird cult following. She lives in this house in Philadelphia. Weird shit happens. There's a baby that's there, then it's not. Um, but this last episode... Uh, one of the characters comes into the house and says what she is. And the family is like, yeah, we knew this all along, whatever. And then at the end, he was like, dear God, I'm sorry for blaspheming you and lying. And like starts whipping himself. And I'm like, wait, so he was lying. So now there's like two or three more episodes. And I'm like, God, so I have to stick with it and watch it. I know. I know. Give me an update once you finish. I will. I'll tell you. You'll yeah. you'll hear about it. I'll probably do like an IG reel. It'll just be me being like, I wasted five years. Of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but going back to the SAG Awards, I did want to talk about one of the best things that I have loved about this award season is Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm sorry, Academy Award nominated Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, is going full les on Michelle Yeoh mm. from uh, not just that dress that you saw. <laughs> huh? This award season, she has just been a scissor sister, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> to um, Michelle Yeoh. She was like, had Michelle Yeoh not, you know, if I if I didn't take this role when Michelle Yeoh, you know, wanted me to do it, I would not be Academy Award nominee Jamie Lee Curtis. I love her so much. She is the reason that I wake up in the morning. Like, it's just, it's kind of obsessive and like... <laughs> Yeah. Like the rolling the fanfare it, out. It is. I'm just like, are they going to finger blast on camera? Like, is she going to get an Academy Award while she gets finger blasted? I mean, yeah. Give us something to talk about. Finally, some podcast. ratings. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like the the Will Smith Chris Rock slap this year, it's going to be full finger. Well, you on know the, on the that they have to do something this year. I don't think they will. They have to. Nope. It's going to be M. Night Shyamalan you think it's presents gonna... the Oscars. That's what it you is. You think it's going to be super boring this year? I think it's going to be really boring. 
But they saw the potential mm-hmm. in that rating spike of it was the first time that that many million of people mm-hmm. started like tuning in and even like with the internet videos and everything trending Oscars yeah. trending for the first time as an award show. You don't think that they have anything up their sleeves that they're going to try to pull out. I think if it's going to be addressed, it's going to be in, I think Jimmy Kimmel's actually hosting the Oscars. So I think if anything, he'll mention it like no slapping. <laughs> and everyone's going to be like, Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think there's going to be, I don't think there's I don't think this is the year I think everyone's like in this whole like we love everyone and we're doing everything. I wonder if Don Barris, if Jimmy Kimmel does it, if he's going to do warm up for it. Oh, because he always does warm up on, on do Kimmel they warm up the Oscars. Oh, yeah, they need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? You think you, I think uh, that they do. All right. I always see Dom and he's like he's like he's got the like uh, top hat and coat. So I always love when Don Barris is like dressed up and mm-hmm. like, does his thing. But yeah. Yeah, so I I mean, if anything, like even at the SAG Awards, Jamie Lee was like, she grabbed Michelle Yeoh's face and they just kissed on camera. Whoa. Hey, ladies, we get it. Uh, They're giving us everything, everywhere, all at once. (laughs) There it is. Did you watch Triangle of Sadness? No, what is that? Oh, I watched it last night and it's, um, it's a movie with Woody Harrelson and it's about this like luxury yacht that just goes awry and it kind of pokes fun. It's like a Swedish director or something, I believe. Mm. And it's just really weird. I'm not going to get into it if you don't see it, but it's just very, very bizarre. Uh, it's about like how they kind of like trash the wealthy. It's kind of like a we show how awful the wealthy class is and treat them really, really bad. OK, but I just I just saw it last night. and It was just very very disturbing and it made me think of uh your pipes being burst yeah i was like was there shit everywhere because like there's a scene where like everyone gets like food poisoning or seasick and like all the toilets like i I guess that happened to uh my sister back in kansas recently a pipe burst and there was poop in the basement yeah probably shouldn't be putting i feel like that tracks in kansas city though (laughs) There's just always. Poop I probably shouldn't be putting that out there on blast. My sister's uh pipes bursting. My sister's but... shitter burst. Listen, listen. There is poop all over the basement back in Kansas City. Now they were knee deep in it. They're having to clean up their own poop. God. Oh well, I'm going to talk about climate change because I do think it is a problem and I think it needs to be addressed. And I blame our favorite little autistic Viking, Greta Thunberg, um, who's warned us from how, day one. How dare you? How dare you? How. How dare, dare you? you? We're going to have a Greta off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told you. I told you. And you didn't listen. Nobody listened to me. There will be blood raining from the sky, and you will burn from the thousand suns. And you haven't even seen my dragon yet. <laughs> <laughs> she could be a Game of Thrones character easily. She already is. Like, <laughs> she, she, like, I'm surprised Greta Thunberg was not cast as Ellie in The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. She pretty much is that. She pretty girl. much is that character. A survivalist. Mm-hmm. Um, Has a little bit of snark and attitude to her. Spunk and, yeah. and attitude. Um, loves a good photo op <laughs> arrest. <laughs> um, but I, I do Takes believe- down unsuspecting people who are, are bigger than her in different areas. Oh, yeah. Eight. Just going at, like, just trolling people on Twitter. Good yeah. for her. Yeah. But this is a problem that I have, and we'll get into the stories, with uh, my biggest problem with climate change is that it's really affecting, uh, it affected this year, and it's years to come, National Margarita Day. Mm. So climate change is affecting National Margarita Day. So here's an article. It says, something to consider as you search for happy hours to celebrate National Margarita Day. The delicious concoction's main ingredient is threatened by changing weather and a new strain on the agave plant's vital pollinator, the bat. Agave-based liquor like tequila and mezcal was the fastest growing spirits category in 2022. Analysis even say it might soon surpass vodka as the best-selling liquor in the country. But scientists from around the world have made it clear that climate change-fueled water shortages, not here in California, will continue to put enormous pressure on food production. Wine and spirits, unfortunately, are not spared from that forecast. A 2019 study found that the climate crisis, coupled with overgrazing from cattle ranching and shitty basements in Kansas and other human activities, may disrupt the distribution and cultivation of agave. 
agave, the main ingredient of tequila. Will this get people to pay more attention to climate change? Uh, I was just about to say, there's animals that are going extinct because of climate change, but if this is oh, yeah. threatening, people will figure something out. Like yeah. people will start going down the streets. We now this is getting serious. Yeah. Agave lives matter. Like that's the protest we need. Cause if you ruin a taco Tuesday without mm. margaritas flowing, come on. We're out. I mean, is it even America anymore? I don't even know. Sure, it might be a Mexican drink, but here in America... Is that the country that you want to live in? An agave-free country? But the polar bears are starving. Shut up, Greta! Shut up! I need my agave for my tequila. Please, there's a polar bear who needs your help. <laughs> don't let me hit you again, Greta. I will, I will, I will slap the braids off of you. Get the fuck out of here, Greta. They got $2 margaritas on happy hour and bottomless please, chips please, and salsa. Please listen. I'm trying my hardest to tell you. And here we are again, blaming the bat. Mm -hmm. You know? It's always the bat. <laughs> this is what Batman had to go through. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like that damn bat. Oh, you also it, do. You're the voice, voice of the, the Joker. Uh, yeah, I am. My yeah. God. Why did I not even mention that? Yes, uh, what's the what's the show? It's called DC Superhero Girls on Cartoon Network. Yes, how would how would Joker blame the bat, or how does Joker blame the bat? Well, 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 well. If it isn't the bat, always rooting things for me. And that Greta Thunberg. Don't even get me started on her. She's the worst. Oh my God! I love just saying theater. <laughs> yeah, right. That's so yeah. And then Batman's like, "Yeah, you're right. It's me. Blame the bat." Yeah. Oh God. Can't we both agree, Batman, that Greta Thunberg is horrible? I can't stand her whatsoever. What if Greta Thunberg was a Batman villain? I mean, she easily could be. She could be. She's working with Mister Freeze. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with the ozone layer and yeah, everything. She's yeah, she's just like messing shit up. But they're like, they're not going to believe her because she's just a kid. And then Robin's like, I'm a kid too, Batman. Like, Get yeah. the fuck out of here, Robin. Coming from me, the mastermind criminal. That's exactly what they want you to think. Oh, here's some uh, DC comic knowledge for you as I was looking for stories for this week. Um, Robin, a.k.a. Nightwing. Mm -hmm. Robin, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah was voted the best comic book ass of 2023. Oh. We get our news get from this, different I, sources. <laughs> <laughs> different comic I, book news. I mean, yeah. I was like, all right. I looked it up and I was like, all right, yeah, I see it. I mean, that's a good that's a good juicy booty. It's a good credit to have. Nightwing. Night Put him in a night sling, am I right? Hello. Too soon. Too soon. Hello. All right, well, let's get out of this climate change and talk about another fun story. You're having another child. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, And you had a COVID baby. I did. Yeah. Yeah. So, which was a weird time to have a kid, I think, right? It was. Uh, for me and my wife, we purposely timed it at that at like that time we gotta where, be at home where yeah where yeah i'm gonna like i was off the road so i was able to to be at home with her way more than i would have been had i been on the road because now i've been on the road a lot while she's been pregnant for the mm -hmm, second mm -hmm. one and the first one was definitely easier for us to navigate with kind of the world shut down and everything like that yeah, yeah. i did, what do you mean you planned it did you foresee covid <laughs> You're like, it's coming. I promise you all. Forget that. about the bat. It was me. I started COVID. <laughs> Damn it, Joker. You're up to no good once again. Um, so, uh, yes, and I actually saw your wife uh, after stand up on the spot. Yeah. I, of course, like I see, I see her and she's pregnant. And I'm like, can I touch your belly? And she's like, yes, you couldn't touch it the first time. And I'm like, oh, this moment. <laughs> um, and uh, it's baby's due in June, right? Yeah. 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 It's a good summertime baby. Um, yeah. It was, a, it was a strange time. Just, I mean, to just the thing that was weirdest for us when we had, because it was COVID times, I wasn't allowed to go to any of the appointments. Why? None of them. COVID protocol. They wouldn't let Even more than one person. Dude, it was crazy. That's weird. They tried to, like, and I'm not an anti-masker by any means, but they tried to have my wife wear a mask while she was delivering the baby, which was the dumbest thing 
I literally looked at her and I go, you're taking that mask off. That This is so dumb. Yeah, you have to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> like, hard. Literally <laughs> fluids and everything. Like... So were you in the delivery room? I was. I so, was in the delivery room. you I had could, to wear a mask? I had to. Yeah, that I, makes sense. Yeah. but, but I, were I, the do- And the doctors were all wearing? They all were wearing masks. How but yeah, weird. I turned into a Trumper, like, <laughs> like in the room. I was like, she's not wearing one of the masks. Okay. <laughs> That's my wife. She's not doing it. Most okay. beautiful wife in the world. She's one of the, she's one of the most beautiful, <laughs> tremendous people I've ever encountered in my entire life. That's my wife. You just saw her shoot v- vagina blood everywhere. She's not putting on the mask, okay? It's not happening. Oh, see, this wouldn't have happened in Florida. No. Um, they'd be like, "You want some meth while you're delivering your baby?" Sure. Um, well, this is a, a question I want to ask you as a as a, already a, a father, but a future father. This woman revealed that she has ditched all her toilet paper in mm-hmm. her house. Yeah. Um, and instead relies on a reusable, quote, family cloth because it, quote, saves money and is softer on her bum. Oh, yeah. Oh, just wait. An environmentally conscious mom. I told you they're listening. <laughs> environmentally. <laughs> Use the family cloth. <laughs> yeah. Like, what in the Handmaid's Tale shit is this? Yeah, dude. T- uh, way too much. She sparked a, a debate online after revealing she uses reusable toilet paper made out of old Christmas pajamas. TikTok creator, TikTok creator is the new Florida is the new mental illness. Oh, uh, sh- her tag is please tag this woman at tiny underscore waste. <laughs> made a video initially showing things her family asks when they come to visit her low waist home, including questions about her lack of paper towels and saran wrap and toilet paper. In the comments section of the video, one person mentioned the use of a family cloth, a reusable alternative to toilet paper, and the creator who is believed to be based in the U.S. responded that she did use, uh, in fact, a family cloth. She says, the family cloth and bidet setup is in the upstairs bathroom. I cannot tell a lie. And here it is. Oh, but she has a bidet. Well, that's smart. But the family cloth with strips of old Christmas pajamas. Now, is there more to this? I don't need to see Uh, it up close, lady. uh, I don't need to see it up close. So... The creator says she was unsure who came up with the term family cloth. Uh, She did say it is an unfortunate name for cloth toilet paper. Let me show you what the setup is in my home to hopefully remove some of the ick factor. Okay, go on, because we're Mm -hmm. we're 1,000% ick right now. Before I die, use the family cloth. (laughs) Grandpa. (laughs) Please, you have to use the family cloth. (laughs) Well, Grandpa passed away. He left us the family cloth. Ah, It's all all I have to my name. My estate. She says, this is the toilet in our upstairs bathroom that me and my husband use. She pointed to a basket. Uh, It was filled with clean wipes, mostly flannel from Christmas pajamas. She says, I let the bidet do all the heavy lifting. Pat dry with a clean wipe and then put the used wipe in this bin, which eventually goes into the laundry. No wipe is ever used for multiple bathroom sessions without being laundered. That would be disgusting. Now I'm on the fence. Well, because I thought it was like a whole family uses the same piece of toilet paper. That's what I thought, too. But the clickbait got us. The clickbait got us because now I'm like, okay, if there's different strips, you've got a bidet. The bidet. I love a bidet. uh, I like a bidet. I don't have much experience. So the, the couple times that I use one, I definitely had the pressure up way too high. Oh, yeah. And it can hurt. Oh, yeah. it was like, you know, I'm not used to having anything back there. So yeah. I was like, woo. Yeah. Woo. It's like a like a sandblaster to a wall. It was like, rough. God. I was like, oh, that's not OK. And then when I when I was like, the, oh, yeah. When it just then like, I was like, OK, cool. When it just blows goldfish kisses at you. It's the best. <laughs> it's just it's yeah. It's like a koi fish on your butt. It's the best. But yeah, when you're spraying graffiti off those walls, it, it can hurt. I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh god. I love. I know. I need to get. I need to get one of those. What are they? A tushy? Tushy? If oh, you're yeah. listening. Oh. I, but I my toilet is tankless, which um, is weird. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. So my building is like an old building and all the toilets. My toilet. It's a tankless <laughs> position. What are you talking about? I just let all the shit accumulate in the basement. Um, no, it's a it's an old it's like a gym. Justin's toilet. been here. 
<laughs> He's with us. He's um, with us. it's like a it's like a gym toilet. Okay. Like, it's so it's like you go in there and you just. Oh. So there's no tank. So I've been like, well, I can't get a bidet. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And gotcha. my boyfriend has the same toilet, and we don't even live together yet. So huh. it's just like, how do we both have the same toilet? Yeah. That's love. That's love. Um. But they do make a tankless bidet, and I really want to get one because I just, I finally. But this doesn't bother me that much. If you have a bidet and you're and you're getting all your business done, and then you just like kind of pad off, and then there's a bin. It's and a little different. A lid on the bin, and then you take it out and you wash it. I don't see what the problem is with that. Environmentally safe and friendly. I I think that it would. I think it's one of those things where you got to have a separate toilet paper for your guest. You mm-hmm. can't have them using the family cloths. No, no, no. Oh, when right. Com- do you know what I mean? If you're if you're over there sitting and you're looking and you're like, is this a piece of flannel I'm supposed to use? <laughs> yeah, you have to let everyone know. freak out a little bit. Yeah. So I know this is might be weird to some of you. We do things a little different over here, okay? <laughs> just bless your heart, bless your butthole, and then just grab one of the flannel strips, start wiping, wiping, wiping away, and then we got a separate little container for the family. You're part of the family now, baby, okay? You're going to use the flannel. Uh, you know what? Don't use the Christmas pajamas. Use the Easter, uh, the Easter service pajamas. Those are great. Because he has not risen yet, not okay? Yet. And, but I just want to welcome you all to our Cinco de Mayo party. Uh, we got lots of beans. Here at our coffee. Cinco de Mayo party, <laughs> we've got a lot of ethnic treats that are out on the table. I hope you brought your Prilosec and a diaper <laughs> because we've got our cloth strips up in the bathroom. Now, it is a B-Y-O-C-S. <laughs> what Bring is your own cloths. Bring your own cloths, okay? Um, I'm all for this if it will help climate change and won't affect our margarita agave. agave. I'm for it too. I, I agree with you on that. Okay. Perfect. Specific right. conditions. I went into the story hating this woman and now I'm like, you know what? You know what? I could follow her. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> what else does this woman do in her home? Yeah. Tiny waist. Yeah. So I think, yeah. And people, of course. Yeah, everyone. people are agreeing with the bidet thing. Everyone's See, like, yeah. I, I thought it was bidetless, and I was. Like, I this thought is it was bidetless too. Crime, because that's just no one. No one should be doing that. No, messy. And if you have kids, oh god. Oh no. uh, yeah. But I mean, um, yeah, my, dude, the, the poops my son has already taken at almost two are crazy. Really? Oh yeah. So if they're bad, like is the, he toilet? He's toilet trained? Not yet. Okay. No. Oh god. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. You're like, yeah. you just throw like pajamas on him, like yeah. not even cut them into strips. You're just like, right. God, just here, just take <laughs> yeah. my old pajama pants. Yeah, th- these are yours now. Yeah, no, if if it's bad, like they poop up their backs. No. Yeah. No, if it's real bad, they poop up. It's crazy, dude. It's a lot. And there's no family cloth that will cleanse the vision that's on my eyes when I see that. Not poop up the back. Yep. It's a real well, thing. Well, here's something that also- Comment below if you're a parent that has had poop up the back. Yeah. Hashtag poop up the back. <laughs> <laughs> Just passing out hashtags. Yeah. If you're a parent whose kid shits up their back, <laughs> let us know in the comments. <laughs> Um, hey man, trying to get that engagement up, brother. Well, if there, thank you. <laughs> if there's something that also suspends, like poop up a back, this video came out and I was kind of baffled by it. I always love like a good glitch in the matrix. Um, I saw one about there's these two guys that are both baseball players, but they mm. play for different teams. They're the same age. They have the same name and the mm. same red hair, and they're not related. Ooh. But they look exactly the same. Yeah, so a doppelganger, but on a different team kind of situation. Yeah, but both play baseball. That's weird. Very strange. It's weird enough even when there's siblings that are in the NFL or the MLB that are on different teams, but for same name, similar looks, same exact that's weird. first and last And name. to make it to the pros, yeah. out of all that, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I love a good glitch. And this one came out of British Columbia. Um, This bird puzzled people because it was suspended in midair. This mystery unfolded in Surrey after a man captured video of a bird floating in the air, motionless. The footage shows a dark colored bird in the sky with nothing attached to it. It happened around 1 p.m. on February 18th near L.A. Matheson Secondary School. And I love people. They're like, that's a dead bird. And it's just floating in the air. No strings, no nothing. 
Uh, so during the video, the man moves around to show there's nothing attached to this bird, nor is it perched on anything. He zooms in on the very lifelike bird, which seems to sway slightly with the wind, but does not flinch or move. So everyone just thought it was this dead bird. And it's weird because, like, do we have, let's see where the video. So, yeah, there's the video of this. What? And it's like wings are spread and it's just sitting there. And everyone's like getting out of their cars. I mean, come on. Is this David Blaine who took the footage? I don't know. Or Chris Angel or one of those. Yeah. And I'm not like a big conspiracy theorist or whatever, but Oof. like the little Sam Tripoli in my head was like, wait a minute. I just was thinking of Sam as soon as I saw that bird. I was just like, <laughs> I know. Just but like his reaction videos was cracked like, me up. <laughs> aliens, balloons, hmm. birds. Um, so here's some where the experts weigh in. They say some people have questioned if the bird is stuck in an Eruv, E-R-U-V. In Jewish tradition on Shabbat, it is forbidden to transfer an object between quote, quote, domains, including from one person's house to another adjacent house. The Eruv, I hope I'm saying that right, oftentimes a fence or wire string erected on poles is a symbolic extension of the home to allow for the movement of things. An Eruv is a boundary that goes around a community that makes it into one giant backyard, says this guy. <laughs> the Jewish people are obligated to keep Sabbath. Jewish people have 613 laws that have to do with Sabbath. Um, in his 28 years in the industry, the industry, relax, he has never seen a bird caught in an aruv. We don't use fishing line. Fishing line is not safe. A Vancouver-based rabbi confirms with Glacier Media there is no aruv in Surrey, British yeah. Columbia. There's no way. Um, so... I mean, I, I I just read two sentences where that guy said, and I was like, that's a demon bird. That's what that it's is. It's a demon. It says, but given the proximity of the trees and the telegraph wires, I would suggest some kind of invisible suspension material, such as a fishing line. So the wire hypothesis is yet to be proven or disproven. It was certainly mysterious, perhaps paranormal, paranormal, but captivating as well. Um <laughs> Do you see where the, a zoology professor at the University of British Columbia who specializes in birds chimed in on the, on the debate? Doug Altshuler says, the bird looks dead. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. The scientist needed to to chime in on this saying, hey, man, that bird looked dead up there. God, man, give this man this a guy, degree. This guy. <laughs> this guy. There's a dead but bird up there. Here's here's something that uh, if you just scroll back up a little bit that I I noticed right here it says this woman went to the area to investigate after she was sent the video Wednesday afternoon when she got there around four thirty mind you this was at one the bird was gone wait what did you say Justin the bird was gone wait the bird that we were just looking at was gone but where did it go Justin I don't know <laughs> but <laughs> I'm so shocked I just saw the bird there it was frozen there moments ago. But it's gone. But where did it go, Justin? I wish I could tell you. It's still a mystery. Was it a bird wire? Was it was it a p paranormal? I don't know. Wait, are there a roofs in this part of I the area? <laughs> you know what? There could be a roofs. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird though. But I mean, if you saw a bird, if I saw a bird just suspended in the air, I'm like, well, I'm drinking. Well, if I saw a bird like that, can you? Okay, can you imagine if that was in someone's home? What do you mean? Imagine a bird or an object was just looking like that where it's floating, just suspended. You think haunted immediately, right? Haunted. Of course. Yeah. So that's what I, when I see something like that, I'm like, mm, I don't yeah. think this is scientific. This is something funky. It is weird. And I feel like there is like, or it's like always that, um, I always follow this account on YouTube called Slapped Ham. And it's like this guy's like Australian. I think I've talked about it on the podcast a couple of times, but he's like, here are the five scariest videos this week. Number four. You know, there's like a little doll with a night <laughs> yeah. camera and it just like moves its head. And I'm like, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> Number three. A woman used a family cloth for centuries in her household. Number one. <laughs> a bird suspended in British Columbia. <laughs> I mean, my God, if we're just giving him content, you're welcome. Right. Um, so I just thought that was weird. Um, Number two, a Kansas City family swimming in their own feces. They're like, what? <laughs> that that tracks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you can't have birds without cats. Mm -hmm. And this next story I love because if I, she is one of my favorite people. Are you familiar with the cat lady, Jocelyn Wildenstein? No, I'm not, oh, actually. Oh, my God. So she... 
Let me just read this story because okay. if you don't know, I'm gonna I'm gonna educate you. You on know what's this crazy place. about this story what? connecting everything? Yeah, this is by Daniel Bird. <laughs> That's good. Right? Good observation. Mm-hmm. So Jocelyn Wieldenstein has dismissed speculation that she's gone under the knife again to change her image as she last a- lashed out at those who speculate over her appearance. The art dealer, who is often dubbed Catwoman due to her changing face, has reportedly spent millions of dollars on cosmetic surgery, although she often disputes these claims. She has previously stated that her famous appearance is due to her Swiss heritage and has now added further fuel to the fire as she shot down all speculation. This woman, Jocelyn, is 82. She's known for using filters, like fillers, okay, but filters on her social media snaps and has now shared two of what appear to be unedited pictures. Um, so. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, my God. Did you just shit up your back? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it went all the way up my beanie, bro. <laughs> oh, this is the scariest cat woman I've ever seen. So this woman has claimed that she has never had cosmetic surgery. Uh, she's always shut down that she has had cosmetic surgery. She's kind of an icon, honestly, like in, in the gay community because everyone is familiar with this woman. She has 1.1 million followers on Instagram. She posted a picture of her practicing ballet uh, with a more natural look alongside the caption, Throwback Thursday, that's me, at a ballet class in Switzerland at 15 years old. So maybe you should stop speculating on my image. Stop Photoshopping my image because you're all wrong. So she is saying that we are all Photoshopping uh, her face. Now, let's see the picture. This is the Throwback Thursday right here, the left. You know. She's a 15-year-old girl right there. Yeah. And you can kind of familiarly see her face. And then we've got full-on beef jerky Barbie over here on the oh right. Oh, my God. This is the definition of a butter face. It's, I would call it a barely face. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know what I'm looking at. It could be a her, Halloween mask. Her body looks, like, so young. It's so weird. Well, I mean, you know, I get, like, 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 like wanting to take care of your body and stuff, but I feel and it, and I'm not knocking cosmetic surgery. I think if you whatever you want to do to your body and your face is totally fine, but to the extent of it, and she's been known as the Catwoman for since like maybe late eighties, nineties. Oh even. yeah, dude. Like, cause this was like a thing. She's eighty two. I mean, come on, girl. this is nutty. Like Kylie Jenner can do it, and we all know she's full of shit. But like, you can't be like eighty two and be like, I have never had work done on my face. I'm like, you have turned into a full candle. Like, I don't even know. Like, she looks like she's being pushed up against like a window. Or like yes, like she's yes, like the like or, a kid like in the in the back of a car going nah, nah, like their face is all like yeah. motion stuff. Or like she's walking against like a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> she's walking her dog in a cur- hurricane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I just thought that was kind of interesting because I was like, it's one thing to do like a throwback Thursday and be like, look, like yeah, oh uh, yeah, yeah. She put that face underneath every hand dryer and every bathroom <laughs> in the country. <laughs> Make sure to take one of the Christmas cloths out and dry your hands. <laughs> God damn it, Cheryl. Um, so, yeah, she says, so she's going off and saying, during a rare television interview, she confessed that it's a wild, it's wild. Usually when we go to restaurants or some French places, they go, hi, Brigitte. And I'm like, actually, you do, you do look like Brigitte Bardot. So she thinks she looks like Bridget Bardot, which, no. She goes, and I don't understand the whole press of the Catwoman thing because Jocelyn has always looked like that. She never really did anything to change her face. I have pictures from 16 years old when, where she looks exactly the same. Okay, if you look exactly the same from 16 years old, then there's no way. Which, by no. the way, I'm going to rant for a second. Do it. Have you seen this like 15-year-old TikTok filter? Oh, yeah. It's creepy. Oh. It's creepy. Oh. And it's like the song in the back is like, Forever young, I want to be. Oh, you just see like some grown person just being like, oh, I miss that child. I was gorgeous for you were 15. You don't look like that anymore. 
You have facial hair in an OnlyFans oh, account. Yeah, yeah. I wanna be. Uh, so anyways, I don't think if you look exactly like you do when you're 15, there's something off. So Forever young. <laughs> no, now it's going to be in your head. I know. All day. <laughs> all day. So let's get out of here. Now, this story I, uh, I'm i going to be sensitive about because I do believe that it's like it's real. And it was a, a very heartfelt moment. But this guy, Louis Capaldi, uh, was a singer, had his fans take over for him singing when he appeared to have dealt with a Tourette tick on stage. Mm -hmm. Did you see this video? I have not. Okay, so uh, he, I don't even know, um, so I guess he has a hit song called Someone You Loved. I don't, okay. I don't know, I don't know where he's from, but um, during his concert, uh, he had Tourette ticks on stage while singing his song, and the crowd then took over, singing the lyrics for him while he was ticking and talking on on stage. So the moment came between him uh, on social media and inspired positive comments from supportive listeners. I love Louis Capaldi. I never knew he had Tourette's. I'm glad I know now. That's an amazing crowd. Humans hum humaning can be so healing to watch sometimes. Coming from someone who has Tourette's, I love this, wrote another. Mm -hmm. So it was a great moment. And he even gets up on stage in the beginning of the video and he's just like, hey, you know, you might gonna, you might see me moving and twitching a little bit, but I'm gonna let you all know I have Tourette syndrome. So just kind of like go along with it. And then in the middle of his song, he was like, you know, he started like doing jerky moves and everything. And yeah. everyone was like, that's our cue, guys. Yeah. We're gonna sing along. Now, I thought this was a beautiful moment. However. <laughs> Here comes the sass train. I, do, do. I wish he had like <laughs> the cuss Tourette's. <laughs> So I maybe that's I, I I just wanted that moment to yeah be, um but I I'm very happy that he has supportive fans mm -hmm. um but here's a story uh and maybe maybe I am a Mean Girl I don't know but this story came out about the actual movie Mean Girls um they're trying to do a new movie and bring the cast together Rachel McAdams and Lacey Chabert Lindsay Lohan Amanda Seyfried. Um, they're all reportedly willing to appear in a musical movie, which I don't know if that's the Broadway musical becoming another movie or what, right. but um, they've all said they are totally on board with it. But the talks have stalled over Paramount's disrespectful, all quotes disrespectful, money offer, page six is told. The stars of the original 2004 classic have remained friends throughout the years. Um and we're willing to return for the new film, which is bringing the Broadway musical version of Mean Girls to the stream or Paramount Plus. So they are doing that. So I guess I don't know if they were going to be in it or if they're going to be like cameos, like Lindsay Lohan's going to be like, you know, the lunch lady or something in right. the movie or whatever. Um, but Paramount Pictures doesn't want to pay the girls what they are worth, said a highly placed production source. All four girls were willing to come, pa come back, but Paramount has not been respectful of what they're worth. So... Um, so Tina Fey's already on board, so they gave her a bag. Oh, yeah. Tina Fey, who wrote both the movie and the musicals, reprising her role as Miss Norbury. She reportedly has a seven-figure deal for her acting role. She's also writing and producing the movie, while Lohan and company were said to be offered a, quote, fraction of that, which... Yeah, but if she wrote and produced it, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you're doing two more jobs than all the other all the other girls involved. I mean, I totally get that. I think this is just one of those moments that everyone's just been waiting for, you know, being like, oh, my God, give us a give us a. It could happen. Us. It could happen. It could happen. It could happen. But also, like. I don't want the Mean Girls musical with them in it. OK, I want Mean Girls High school reunion, mm -hmm. and all their kids now go to the school. That's and then we get that next generation right. of girls. I don't want them being like, I'm Rachel McAdams and I played Regina George, and now I'm like one of the moms of. I don't want that. I want the, I want Regina George as a mom. I want you know Karen. I want uh, I want uh, Janice Ian. I want all of them coming in and doing the thing. Lindsay Lohan's probably like, I want. Eight figures I live in Dubai. Okay, Lindsay, relax. You did one Christmas movie, and you told us to drink milk and Pepsi, and I'll never forgive you for it. And Herbie wasn't as good with you. Yeah, so, I mean, 
Parent Trap, though. OG. I think there there's rumors that Parent Trap 2 is coming out, and Ooh. she might be in that, too. I'm here. I've said it on the podcast. I'm here for a lohanna mm-hmm. but <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, I don't want this. Mm-hmm. I want... You want more of the Jedi's and the Sith Lords to be fighting each other? Like this is my daughter, and she will fight your daughter. Pass, pass the saber. Pass yes. the evil to the. I don't yeah. want like new people coming in and being like, "We're doing Mean Girls, and it's a musical." Oh, you know? hey, mom. They do. So I have a complaint about this. Uh, they do this on a lot of Disney shows. Mm-hmm. They did it with uh, Girl Meets World. Mm-hmm. Okay. Corey and Topanga are the parents now. Mm-hmm. But the problem that I have with it is they have made them idiots just like they do all parents in the Disney universe. Does do you know what I mean? Disney and like Nickelodeon. Like they don't know how things oh, go I anymore. Oh, oh, oh. I'm just a dad. I'm just a dad. I don't know how to plug in my cell phone to the wall because uh, I'm a dad. I'm an idiot. Come on, dad. It's just called, it's just <laughs> internet porn, you know, like. Uh, how do I help you out with this? So. They do that with all the parents, uh, just in general in Disney. But the problem I have with what they did with Girl Meets World is you already know, I mean, and maybe, you know, it's not meant for me, obviously, but it's the characters that we know and love that they are making idiots now. I'm like, they've never been this dumb. Yeah. We've grown up watching them. They've yeah. never been this dumb, and now you're making them idiots? Anyway. Well, yeah, and also they would, like, cut to the camera to let us all know that they were, like, they, they're, they're cool. Like, Wait a Till Mr. Feeney sees this, you yeah. know, and now they're just stupid. Time out. That's when I uh, finger blasted her. <laughs> anyway, time back in. Is that coming back, Saved by the Bell? It, Did you ever watch the new oh, one of that? I didn't watch the new one, but uh, I love the show. Morris is like the governor of the town or, or the state. I don't know. I think he's the governor. Is he? I think so. Wow. And Kelly's like his wife and like Slater is just doomed to be the gym teacher. He's just like, well, but also I'm like Mario Lopez in a singlet. Sign us up. Lisa Turtle's back after everyone was like, why wasn't she invited? And then Mm -hmm. like now she's back on. Is Jesse Spano back after the Showgirls stint? Oh, yeah. Showgirls. Like she even makes jokes about Showgirls. And she's like, why would I do that? What's next? I'm going to be on a poll. And everyone's like, yes. Yeah. Thank you for acknowledging it. Screech is not. Well, he did. Right. (laughs) And we're really sorry if you didn't know the screech was yeah. dead and we just broke the news to you that way. We didn't uh, mean to. He's been shoved into a locker for all eternity. <laughs> oh, awful. <laughs> all right. We got a couple more stories. Are you a big Pokemon I love person? Pokemon. Okay. This story, um, I am not. I can appreciate it. Um, I never really got into the Pokemon uh cards and the coins i didn't go so um i didn't go i didn't play pokemon go Mm -hmm. uh but i had the cards as a kid when i grew up uh and i loved uh the video games i had like the blue cartridge the red cartridge the yellow cartridge all like i had a bunch of the different games so i follow it like but I didn't like continue into adulthood, if that makes sense. Right. I didn't do Pokemon Go because people were falling off cliffs. Right. That is a <laughs> that is a real thing. Yeah. Uh, Which I thought thing. was just Darwinism at its finest. And as these characters evolve, humanity does not. How, uh, how dare you? <laughs> My cousin died playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> he was eaten by a polar bear on a rogue iceberg. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, my cousin was eaten by a Gyarados <laughs> It's because of global warming. I mean, I don't, I, I was never big into Pokemon, but it did make me laugh because people were like, oh my God. Remember there was like videos of people like rushing to parks. Oh yeah. And being like, oh, I need to find a Charizard. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. You're like, God, get a hobby. But I can appreciate the characters. I think it can be like educational and and whatever to kids. And I still love the original cartoon so much. See, I was like team. um, What were they? The 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 boy and the girl. Oh, Uh, Ash Ketchum and Misty. Were those the the those were the leads? No, 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 no. It was like Team Rocket. I was like, (laughs) I was like, (laughs) I was. I did not. <laughs> you were into Jesse and yes, they had bitchy hair. They had a cat who could talk. It's Jesse and James, I think. Jesse and James. Team Rocket. Team Rocket. Yeah, I would be Team Rocket. Yeah, I'm just like, and we just sit there and just 
I think you like them because of their costume changes. Absolutely. Yeah. And they had, you know, they had flair. They had flair. They had, flair, they yeah. had attitude. They had snark. They were funny. I know. That's right. Yeah. And at the end, they'd always lose. And you're like, you're like, ah, oh, goddamn. Maybe one day they'll win. Team Rocket blasting home again. <laughs> yeah. They were camp. And I loved it. Yeah. Um. So this, now this Pokemon, after all the video games on like Nintendo Switch, Switch? Oh right. uh, yeah, Nintendo yeah. Switch. Yeah, Nintendo Switch and all those games have come out. Pokemon has now come up with a new app called Pokemon Sleep, which is weird. Same with the Christmas cloths. I was weird on this one at first, but then I got into it. Pokemon Sleep uh, has napped for a while, so I guess this is an app that they've been waiting on. Um, we first heard about the Pokemon theme mobile app designed to help you sleep better and track your sleep back in 2019. But now Pokemon Sleep is finally stirring again as a new introduction video for the game reveals in Pokemon Sleep. The more sleep you catch, the more Pokemon you catch too. Um, and then they show us this little introductory video. Um, now, I didn't understand what it meant by a game that you play when you sleep. Um, so when your heart rate goes down to a certain level, are you gaining points and you're gaining Pokemon? In a yeah, I think yeah. that's what happens. It says, uh, in Pokemon Sleep, Professor Neroli will help you research the sleeping habits of different Pokemon. When you sleep, your rest will get measured, recorded, and analyzed by the app. Pokemon Sleep will categorize your sleep into sleep types, most commonly dozing, snoozing, and slumbering. In the morning, you'll have, quote, caught Pokemon that sleep like you do. To win at the game... All you have to do is get a good night's sleep because the more sleep you get, the more Pokemon you'll discover and the more likely you are to unlock rare sleep styles and Pokemon. We guess it does uh, gamify sleep maybe successfully. I think this is great because A, I think this will get kids to go to bed early. I think parents will be like, thank God. Um, it is a cute commercial. If we could just, maybe you want to see a little bit of the commercial. Uh, not the Pokemon Go one. No, go up. Right there. Here's the, the teaser trailer. Okay. A Pokemon Sleep. Just saying exclusive. Rest is the strongest healing move, even for humans. That's a Snorlax, I yeah, think? It is. Okay. Good, yeah. Here's where it gets terrifying. You're in your bed, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> these <laughs> things creep up next to you. Could you imagine? I mean, this is... This is some odd advertising. Everyone got a good... I mean, no one's screaming in this video. They're just thrilled. Yeah, no, I'd wake up and be like, good God, a uh, Bulbasaur, what are you doing in here? <laughs> There's a Jigglypuff next to me. No, Harold, not you. <laughs> Dude, this could easily be an ad for Pokemon Come. <laughs> like, they just hooked up with all these Pokemon. This is the morning after. Yeah, it's it's... Oh, and now everyone's in a good mood. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Everyone's in a good mood. If you get a good night's sleep, we're all going to be a little nicer to each other. We're all going to like be. Uh... But this is this is my only issue with it. Mm -hmm. What about the people who are lazy mm -hmm. already, and then that's encouraging them Lethargism. to sleep too much? Like they're lethargic. so they're they're already dudes who sleep in. So they're like, oh, I'm going to be great at this game. Yeah, and then they're like, oh. I get rewarded even more for being lazy. Could be an issue. Yeah, exactly. But also if you're that husband or wife and it's like, honey, get out of bed. You're like, I'm depressed. No, you're just trying to catch Pokemon. Get up. Get a job. The kids haven't eaten in three days. <laughs> There's dry dump all over Junior's back. <laughs> <laughs> it's calcified, honey. God, well, yeah, but however, I am a very, I advocate, uh, uh, getting a good night's sleep. Um, so when I did Sober January, um, which I'm still doing, kind of. I've really limited my drinking um, because I, I um, what's it called? I record my sleep as well on my Apple Watch. Okay. So I get my Apple Watch 
and I check those rings in the morning, and if they are green and blue, solid. So is it red when you when you when when, when you, you die in your sleep? Over? It turns red. Okay, great, great. Um, which it's done a couple times. When you it, get sleep paralysis, yes. it's kind of a gray. When I drank though, it would be like brown, red, yellow. Like it was bad. It just because you're tossing and turning so much in your just sleep. Just because you're or tossing what? and turning, your hearts your heart rate's off, and you know you're you're. Uh, I don't know. Your body's drawing in your in your sleep. Right, it's just not resting as, yeah. well, as well as it yeah. could be. And you have like you have toxins in your body and alcohol's a suppressant, so it's like, you know, it, I was like, you know what? I probably need to sleep a little better and like I wake up and I check those rings and they're blue and they're green and I'm like, "Good morning." Would I do this with a Pokémon? Absolutely. I can't wait. I can't well, wait. then it's tailored for you perfectly. I think it is cuz I think it would be like you got a good night's sleep and then you have like a little like hybrid of a of a possum and an onion like saying good morning i'd be like oh <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah worship the dark lord what was that what pikachu was that? huh <laughs> look at the birds suspending above me <laughs> what <laughs> check your morning mushrooms what huh um so i I'm, I'm very excited about this okay well, um but good. I, we have one more story all right and then we will wrap it up this was funny because i i we're in a TikTok world, and that's just how it is. And this fascinated me because country TikTok influencers, country talk, as it's called, um, it's its are, own category, its own. Oh yeah, there's 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 a uh, uh, haunted talk. There's uh, ooh, you just add everything and add a talk. I think I it. I think I have cleaning talk. Cleaning online. talk, DIY talk. I liked a couple videos of this dude. Cleaning up people's strangers' yards, and it just feeds it to me constantly. Oh, yeah. Now there's a ton of those. I got I got hooked on some woman who like cleaned tombstones. She would spray wash it like like a bidet. Yeah, yeah power and, spray. And, but she yeah. would like narrate it, and she's like, "I'm going to tell you the tale of like what happened to this person in 1832." Here lies Screech. It's totally. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but like, it's like old tombstones, so like moss and dirt and mm -hmm. leaves, and she just goes in there and it's like bleached, and you're like, God, I wish that was my butthole. Um, it's totally good. But <laughs> so now there's country TikTok, and this says, "Watch out, ladies! Country TikTok influencers are out to steal your man. One slip up, and these ladies are waiting with country fried steak, cold beer, farm equipment, and acreage." I haven't heard acreage in forever. Usually a racist term. But well, it... acreage, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anymore. The steal your man trend. So this is a trend. The steal your man trend involves a combination of warnings to other ladies about the treatment of their men and self-advertisements. The influencers often list their age, acreage, vehicles, and a sexual innuendo. Uh, One of the viral videos <laughs> warns. This is one of the videos. You might want to stop treating your man like trash or else he's going to end up at my house with country fried steak, taters, and a case of cold beer waiting for him when he gets home. Mm. So there are other clips with similar warnings about not taking your man for granted. Then there are the ones that simply put out some stats, if you will. Those videos let the stats do the talking. I'm 31. I come with 40 acres, dirt bikes, and a built-in waterfall. Ew. Oh, and that woman's name is Golf Girl Rihanna. No, wait. <laughs> Golf Girl Hannah. Okay. <laughs> Golf, Girl Golf Girl Rihanna. I was yeah, like, right. all right. Uh, all right. So the trend has its own theme song, a mashup of Morgan Wallen's song last night. Uh, oh, okay. Well, this tracks now. And Dr. Dre's the next episode. This makes the trend easy to find on the video sharing app. Additionally, having a theme song makes it easy for others to turn this trend into a battlefield. And that's exactly what's happened. Ladies who are not down with the country girls coming for their men have issued responses of their own. Some of the responses are a little more direct than others and have their own warning messages attached to them. Oh, I really hope one of them's I wish a bitch would. Um, this one down here says... Y'all thought this trend was cute, but there's wives like me out there ready to curb stomp you Jesus. flirting with my husband. <laughs> God. Just straight to that. Country girl, shake it for me now. What? What, your lower jaw? Like shake hanging from the me. curb? God. So... 
some of them are sitting on the sidelines and watch uh, the comments. That's what I kind of do. I kind of watch everything, but also like going straight to curb stomping people for flirting with your husband's probably not an overreaction, but stealing men by offering up a bunch of land to do cool stuff on isn't great either. Bottom line is be careful out there. TikTok isn't just sending all your personal information to the Chinese government. It's also a battleground where ladies are coming after your man. Y'all got to stop telling your man you ain't feeling it tonight because memory foam Maddie is here to stay. <laughs> but also, is this just a girl thing? I don't think guys are... I think guys would do it. Guys you think are so? fucking weird. I think guys would be like, hey, you better watch your girl because I look at this fish I caught and I'm holding it. You know what that means. You know what? The fish represents my penis. Yeah. Hey, look at all this back here. I got this nice mullet for you all. You want to see something good? Uh-huh. I think, uh, okay. Also, why are we acting like this is like, um, like why are we land staking? I got acreage. I'm 21. I come with 35 acres, seven vehicles, a pretty pink flower, and a drinking problem. Sign me up. <laughs> Sounds like a nightmare. Sounds like she needs a Pokemon app. <laughs> All right, Jeremiah, thank you so much for coming today. This was so much fun. Where can people find you and give us all the stats and the followings, all that jazz? Of course. Uh, I'm Jeremiah Standup on all social media. I'm a fun follow, post uh, daily fun videos. And then uh, my special, March 21st, on my YouTube. It's called Daddy, Jeremiah Watkins Daddy, youtube.com slash Jeremiah Watkins. And then uh, look out for Justin's episode soon. Of stand up on the spot coming out on wait. YouTube. I can't wait. And, uh, and Scissor Bros, of course. Shout out to all the yes. Scissor siblings in the comments. Yes. Love y'all. I love, I love your podcast. So funny. And then make sure to check out my special Gay Bash, which is going to be featured and premiering on Out TV on March 20th, which is my birthday. Um, it's going to be a really fun time. I actually shot it here at the Comedy Store. And then uh, I will be at the Bell House Theater in New York City. March 22nd, please come out. If you were in the tri-state area and you have been like, Justin, please come to the East Coast. Come to New York. Take a train. Take a bus. <laughs> take this something. This one's it. Get there. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see you guys. Tickets are on sale right now. Get them. Get them. Just get them. And, and uh, you, if you listen to this podcast and you have not seen Justin Martindale live, Aww. you are doing something wrong. You got to go see him. He's one of my favorite people to watch. Genuinely, I love watching you, brother. It's Thanks. always a joy to be around, riff with you, whatever. I get to hang out with him here at the Comedy Store. Hang out with him in New York or come see him live at the Comedy Store. You will not be disappointed. He's always one of the highlights of the night on the lineup. Oh, thanks, Jeremiah. I would have been so weird if you were like, if you haven't seen him, you're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll catch you next time on Just Say with Justin Martindale. Take care. Have a great week, guys. See you later.